It has been a while since we last chatted. And at that time, I was not a happy chappy, as the flickering neon light seemed to be the only real action that was happening on our bus to Overland Motorhome build. The question is, what has happened while I was away? What did happen is that East Coast Scratch and Dents boss man, Bram Pretorius, kept a steady flow of images to my WhatsApp and it did look as though there was a bit more cooking than a couple of weeks ago. But as they say, the proof of the pudding is cooking it on the motorhome stove. So best I get my petite butt down to the workshop and see what it is that we can share with you in episode 92 of A Dream Called Mirai. Forgive me my friends, for I've been away. It has been two weeks since my last insert. In that time, I went to Cape Town and spent time with my soulmate, and it was very pretty. I am now back, and I am hoping that while I was away, a a load of stuff has been done on Mariah. Last week, this place was like a temple for those who like to worship in total silence. I learned that silence is golden, in that it costs a lot of money. I like silence in the game reserve. At East Coast Scratch and Dent, silence is a word, a swear word. Listen. Now that's what I'm talking about. Like all decent temples, this temple has a gargoyle, and its gargoyle comes in the form of Markiplant Chris, who is perched where all good gargoyles should be perched, on the roof. I can see that Chris has spent time adding supports to the front section of our build. Where there has been progress is up here on the roof. Um, you can see this whole top section, um, Chris has now put it into place. He sorted out that side section. You remember last time I showed you he was using a, a, like a foil to work out how to sort it out. It's been sorted out. So the front section up top there is now done. It still needs to be secured right on top. Uh, let me just show you this now. This was really fraught steel. It was rusted away. It was weak and big cause for concern so this has been totally rebuilt um, this is pretty solid steel's been replaced uh, then this strut here is one of the supports for the windscreen i was worried it was a bit flimsy that's not this is solid there's like a about a, a quarter of a steel pipe inside that tapers into a shape and it's pretty staunch Chris has also started to play around with the marker lights above the driver's cab. That little light fitting, uh, it's sticking out quite far now, but what Chris will do is he's going to just shorten it a bit. So it'll probably, you know, it'll go in by probably about another what, 30, 30 more or so. And, uh, but it's going to look quite lacquer. Meanwhile, Rocky has completed all the doors for the inside storage units. All the screws currently used will be replaced with stainless steel screws. Chris and Brahm are both busy cutting and grinding small components for our interior. A decision has been made to make some of our panelling uh, with all the wiring behind removable panelling, which makes a lot of sense because if there's ever any issues there, we'll be able to remove it. So the guys are busy doing that now. Rocky has already put in what they call rib nuts. Uh, that we will use to secure the panelling to the wall and at least if there are any issues or we want to add stuff we can just remove it to access it. Uh, I think it's a good call. These removable panels will also be secured using stainless steel fasteners. All very necessary down here on the lower south coast of KZN. Yeah. I am upbeat about the progress being made but one area is still bugging me. One of the big worries is in the fiberglass department. Now when I left here, one side fairing had been made. I've come back and still only one side fairing has been made. Um, yeah, I'm not happy. 
I am so tired of having to sit on the same people's cases. I took my frustrations to Brown, who must have had a wee chat with those concerned. When I next walked into the fiberglass shop, Resin Man was busy coaching new kid on the block, Nikki, on how to make the fairing. If Nikki is a chip off the old block, the old block being Mockaplan Chris, Nikki's pa, we should see things speeding up. True to form, it was not long, and we were ready to cast another fairing. Okay, closing range, and then we're going to get on with things. The fact that it has taken three weeks to make these two things gets up my nose a lot. Um, there's other work we still need done. My little wash basin um, that's going in uh, to replace that Frankenstein stainless steel basin. Nothing going on there. Mirai loves getting visitors. So when VIP guest Marissa Nordekraf, tattoo artist extraordinaire, popped in, Mirai had a moosachel. Regular viewers will remember some time ago, this wonderful lady designed a logo for Mirai. And this is Marissa, and she's here visiting us, and she's visiting Mirai, and later she's going to do some work on me. And if you want to contact her, I'm going to put her website or her contact details if you want to do tattoos, and she'll maybe do you. Maybe. My home became Marissa's studio for a couple of days. Tattooing is a complex process. Those of you who have never had a tattoo before, it's not something that you like, just sit down and somebody comes along and they hoi with a needle and boom, it's done. It's quite a process. You First of all, you have to choose what you want and you make sure it's not like Chinese or Japanese characters that say words like yo masa, you know, because it could be something like that. So you make sure you know what you're getting if you're going to do text. Then you have to make a stencil of that. The stencil gets put on the body. You make sure it's in the right space. Once you are happy that all is correct, the actual tattooing starts. It is at this point that you start wondering how long this will go on for, and you know there is no turning back. A strange question that I get asked quite often by people is, didn't that hurt or was it sore? Of course it hurts, of course it's sore, it's part of the thing, but it's not a pain like when you blixem your thumb with a hammer or something or you cut your finger off. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just something. It's a sensation and it depends where on your body it can be quite a hectic sensation. That took two hours, uh, exactly two hours, almost to the minute, two hours, and it looks fantastic. Apart from sadomasochism, this must be one of the few times you thank someone for hurting you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> If you do want to get hold of Marissa, you can find her on Instagram at tatulia.stellenbosch. She is really worth a visit. Okay, let's get back to Marai and see if anyone there needs to be hurt for snoozing on the job. So I just went to Brahm and I asked Brahm, I said, Brahm, what do you need from me to finish this vehicle at the end of September? His words to me were, Nothing. We're going to finish. Okay. There are times when I think that I will be on a Zimmer frame by the time our build is completed. Or that I will never see the build completed. And on that note... Now I've got a little policy with Liberty Life so that when I shuffle off my coil, Mariki can go and clap a glass of wine and a pizza on me, which is cool. I stopped smoking in 2015. Now according to these oaks, I can reduce my premium because I'm a non-smoker. Every single year I've been trying to get hold of these oaks to tell them I'm a non-smoker. Nobody's got back to me. Yesterday I emailed and I cc'd the CEO, uh, Yuresh Maharaj. This morning I get a phone call, oh Mr. Leonard, oh yes, we're going to help you. Yeah, so that's what it takes. So hopefully my premium will come down. So message is, if you stop smoking, you can reduce your life insurance policy by a lot and sit on these oaks. They take your money and when you want to reduce it, it's a mission. Not as big a mission as building a motorhome from scratch, however. There is still so much to do and as soon as we sort one thing out, another little challenge rears its head. But we are moving forward and it is breathtakingly exciting. There's a lot of little things going on and I mean little things. 
teeny little things, but a lot of it. Um, so that's maybe why I'm getting a bit antsy, you know, I want to see the big things happening. Where's the dash? Where's this? Where's that? But the little things have to be done. And um, yeah, we have to start at the beginning. You know, it's like eating that elephant. How do you do it? One bite at a time. Inside Marai, things are really starting to style. Rocky has almost completed all the aluminium edging throughout the interior. Rocky has also positioned the side panel to our fridge freezer compartment and secured the storage drawer that goes above it. Some of you may remember quite a while ago there was another bus in East Coast Scratch and Dance workshop waiting to be converted into a motorhome. In fact, there were two at one stage. Um, well, the owner of that bus, uh, he eventually moved it out. I think he was getting uh, tired of waiting and he sent me some photos. His build has been completed. Um, and yeah, it looks, it looks all right. It's not bad. It was done by a local company of coach builders of Pinetown, apparently. Um, I will say my finishes are going to be a bit better than yours, bro. They are. But um, yeah, I wish him many, many miles of happy motorhoming. It gives me huge satisfaction to be able to say that our Marai is hand built from her rims all the way up to her gargoyle perch. At last some positive news from the fiberglass department. Um, behind me here is one product, another one in the mold, and our third one is on the floor over there. So uh, some progress there for our fairing. And then our resin man came in for a little while, and I mean the Oaks and Lot Strong, and he started to work out where to put all the different elements on our dashboard. Resin man Andre Nell sets about drilling holes into our one of a kind dash. He creates space for our power points and cuts openings for our radio and air vents. Now we need to work out the exact position of the dashboard inside Mirai. Finally, our dashboard has sort of got its place. Now there's some major, major decisions that we need to make. Um, for this to work, the dash actually has to be a lot more forward than I initially thought. So there's quite a big space between what you see there and the windscreen. So it's what to do with that space. Uh, yeah. But what we really need to do is to get the seats here sit here and get a driving position uh, just to see ergonomically how it's all going to work but um, gives you a very good idea of what we're going to be looking at hopefully when we next chat i will have more to share with you regarding this big leap forwards in our driver's cab and so we come to the end of a, another insert a varied insert but uh, with good movement. I started out a little bit rocky, but uh, things have picked up. Um, yeah, <laughs> we are getting there. I'm, 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 I'm getting a little bit like sweaty palms, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy. Um, yeah, please. Uh, the war in Ukraine is going on and on and on. There's some horrible stuff going on there with regards to the power station. But our war at home uh, is as desperate. And that's a war against crime. So please look after yourselves and look after your families and keep safe. Remember to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. You will find us under A Dream Called Mirai. Until next time, keep your dreams alive.